I hope this video earns your thumbs up as we are finally doing the ultimate guide to trading Forex. In this video, we're going to answer the questions, what is Forex, why trade Forex, what are the basics of the Forex markets, and how can I get up to speed as quickly as possible from going zero to making over $10,000 a month trading Forex. So again, I hope this video earns your thumbs up, guys. Let's get right into the details. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Nick. I've been trading currencies for over 10 years. My strong suit and what I have most experience in, which is trading itself trading for over 10 years over five years of prof consistent profits I have verified profits that I show every single day in our discord and I've written a book on the subject matter called the Forex Bible which is available for free to all of our discord members guys so let's jump right into the video I think the best way to do this video is to actually skim through the Forex Bible and just kind of summarize or paraphrase each section so that you guys can understand now we'll start with what is Forex Forex is foreign exchange the foreign exchange market Markets are the most liquid markets in the world because there are trillions of dollars traded every day. Okay, we'll get into that later. But basically what we're doing is we're trading currencies from different countries or different nations. Now the US, the United States of America uses the US dollar or USD, but in Europe, most countries that are part of the Eurozone use the Euro, it's a different currency. So we trade these currencies against each other. If you come from crypto, you might be used to trading cryptocurrencies. It's the same thing, except we're trading real life currencies. Okay, now why trade Forex? There are a couple of reasons here, but I'm not gonna get into too many because I have an upcoming video, 10 reasons why Forex makes more sense than crypto. First of all, Forex is 24 seven, unlike the stock markets, okay? Um, this is true six days a week because this, the markets open Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time because that is the morning time in Sydney, Australia, which is where the world starts, where the sun rises, and they close Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern. So you can trade Forex six days a week, almost 24 seven, closed on Saturdays, okay? Margin. It literally takes five minutes to open a Forex account with a reputable broker and then you're off to the races. You're allowed 50 to 1 margin in the United States, okay? Something you were not allowed to do in crypto just yet because margin and futures trading of crypto hasn't been regulatorily, regulatorily approved in the United States. And outside of the United States, you're allowed more leverage than that in Forex. But that's not necessary and we'll get into why a little later, guys. Be careful with margin, especially if you're newer. It's all about risk reward. Liquidity. Okay, forex markets are the most liquid markets in the world, and I think this number is now at $7 trillion a day in transaction volume. This comes from speculation, which means traders like ourselves, hedge funds, banks trading, but it also comes from normal business activity. Countries, businesses, international business, they do trade with each other. They hedge future um, kind of expectations of currencies and interest rates so they can hedge their business and protect themselves as well. Low transaction costs. Now, if you're coming from crypto, this one um, is a good one because the spread of a currency pair is the difference between the bid and the ask. And we'll get into that a little later. Okay. It's measured in pips. Okay. In Forex, we talk about pips. These are basically points. Okay. A price of a currency pair moves up or down in pips. We'll talk about that later. But basically, there's very low transaction costs in the Forex markets. If you want to trade a million, two million you know a seven eight figure size position it's only going to be a couple hundred dollars transaction whereas in crypto when you sling a futures position of one to five million dollars you're paying over a thousand dollars in fees making it very very hard to day trade if you're into day trading or scalping very hard to day trade crypto at a high level okay so if you're watching anyone who's day trading or scalping crypto they're not doing it with any serious money i'll leave you with that okay what do I need to be successful? I'm gonna skip over this part, guys. You need perseverance in the trading game. It's a tough game, not everyone makes it. You might've heard the stat, 90% of traders fail. Now that is true. It's not because they don't understand or they don't ever learn technical analysis. In fact, most of these traders, after a few years, could go on to be analysts. They could go work for a bank hedge fund and be an analyst, but they can't be a trader because there's a very real difference between analyzing and being a profitable trader. It's like being LeBron James or just being a basketball fan who analyzes and knows a lot about basketball, okay? I make an analogy with sports all the time, so you'll continue to hear me say that. But all you need is perseverance, hard work, but most of all, patience and discipline, not just in the learning process, but because once you're actually profitable, you need these traits or you'll never make it to consistency. You'll never make it. You need to be patient and you need to be disciplined in your trading, and that's just the way it is, okay? Forex basics. In Forex, we trade what we call pairs. Now, you guys are used to BTC, USD, 
or Ethereum USD. These are cryptocurrency pairs. In Forex, we trade Forex pairs, okay? So the most popular pair to trade, the most liquid pair is the Euro USD, which stands for Euro United States Dollar, okay? The Euro is over the USD, so you can think of it in terms of one Euro equals whatever the price is in dollars. That's how you, that's how you read this, right? The one on top of the slash, right? The num numerator, the one on bottom is the denominator. So the way you read it is the is one numerator is equal to the price denominator, okay? So whatever the price of this is, one euro is equal to $1.5. If euro USD is currently at 1.5, but we all know that it recently actually dropped below parity, below one for the first time. So one euro is equal to 99.99 cents. Okay, that's how you would read it at this point in time. We can go through some other ones, okay? USD max right here. You would read this since USD is the numerator. One US dollar is worth 20 Mexican pesos, okay? One US dollar is worth 137 Japanese yen. One Canadian dollar is worth 105 Japanese yen and you get the picture, okay? So that's how you read a pair, okay? Um, all right, so for instance, right now the euro is quoted at 1.18, so we say, okay, we already talked about that. This means the euro is stronger. Yes, if it's a number above one, that means the first one is stronger. But now one euro is below one. One euro gives you 99 cents. That means the euro is weaker than the dollar. One great British pound is worth one dollar and 17 cents. That means the British pound is stronger than the dollar, okay? Because one of them is giving you more dollars. Okay, so let's continue down here. There are eight major currency pairs in Forex. We call these the majors. The majors are all, okay, well, each of these with the USD, but the ones we trade, USD, the Euro, the Great Britain Pound, Great British Pound, the Japanese Yen, JPY, the Canadian Dollar, CAD, the Australian Dollar, or the Aussie, AUD, the New Zealand Dollar, or the Kiwi, NZD and a Swiss franc or the Swissy CHF. Okay, nickname for the the British pound is the sterling. Okay, so these are the eight major currencies in forex, and this is what I was going to say: the seven pairs that represent the USD with the other seven majors are referred to as the majors. Okay, these are the most liquid. If you're a beginner, you should probably just trade the majors. That way, you can watch the Dixie. You know what the dollar is doing. You have an idea, and you can kind of see which is your favorite setup. Anyways, these are the seven majors: Euro USD, GBP USD, USD JPY, USD CAD. AUD USD, New Zealand USD, and USD Swiss franc. Okay, these are the majors. The USD with each of the other seven major forex currencies. Okay, but then of course you can take any of these and mix them with each other, and those are called the cross pairs. Okay, some of the most popular cross pairs, Euro JPY, GBP JPY is a big one. It's very volatile, so if you're from crypto, you like that one. And you can see the rest right here. Okay. You can see on my watch list, I keep some commodities up here, and then I keep a watch list of, I have 17 in total, so four, and then, you know, 13 currency pairs. You can see I have all my USD pairs here, so the majors, and then I added the USD Mexican, which is a big one. Um, we'll talk about it later. It's very positive correlation to the risk markets, okay? So depending if it's going up or down, we're in risk on or risk off, okay? Um, so I have the, set, the, the, the majors, I have eight USD pairs. Then I have some yen pairs, right? I have one, two, three, four, five yen pairs, and then just a totally random one, Euro, Swiss, franc that I like to trade, okay? Keep a small watch list if you're a beginner. I recommend just trading the majors or trading five pairs um, and yeah, and watch those, okay? Don't, don't overwhelm yourself. There's 28 different combinations with all the cross pairs, okay? Um, okay, the reason I like this is because I have four where USD is the denominator. I have four where USD is the numerator. I have four more Japanese yen here and then I have my Euro, my Euro Swiss franc. Okay, so I can kind of, you know, you can see the first four are red, okay, and the and the second four are green. That means right now the dollar is bullish, right? Because if the dollar is bullish, the ones with numerator dollar are going up, and denominator dollars are going down. It, it, four red, four green, that, right off the bat, I know the dollar is bullish today, okay? A bit bullish, okay? Um, anyways, let's continue here. 
All right, so, and then you have exotic pairs like Mexican pesos, Singapore dollars. These are gonna have um, you know, a bigger spread, so bigger transaction fees. I don't recommend doing these. Don't Try them in a demo account. There's no need to trade these pairs just yet. Okay, you're gonna get slippage, so you might not get entered at the price. It's kind of like trading a small cap coin. Not as bad, nowhere near as bad, okay? But stick to the majors, okay? Now let's talk about pips. A pip is a unit of measurement for a Forex pair. So we count the movement in terms of pips, okay? So for example, we can say the EURUSD is up 40 pips today, or I made 40 pips on this trade. When you look at a quote, a price quote, a pip is the fourth number after the decimal. So if EURUSD is 1.183, these are three numbers, the fourth number after the decimal, that's one pip. So if EURUSD went from this price of 1.1834 to 1.1835, it went up one pip, okay? If it goes from this price to 45, it went up 10 pips. The way I do it, you can ignore one decimal one. You ignore number, decimal number. So then you just read these three, okay? So this is the quick glance when I'm looking at, you know, right now I ignore number, decimal number, and I told you I just read three. So I would read nine, six, three. Okay, 963. If this goes up to 973, I know we won't. We moved up 10 pips. Okay, if it goes down to 960, we moved down three pips. Okay, so I just read these three, 845. And if you know, if I get into the trade and I and we rally up to 945, we moved 100 pips. Okay, so that's the way I like to do it. Okay, again, ignore everything before the decimal. Okay. All right, so we count pips for all the majors in this exact same way, the way I just explained, fourth number after the decimal, except for Japanese yen pairs. A yen pair such as USD, JPY is going to be like this, 106.24, and the pip is the second number after the decimal. So for your yen pairs, you can see they are different. They're, they're numbers that are way higher. They're not like one or, 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 or under one dollar. They're all like around 100. And yes, it's the second number. So 56 for CAD JPY is 105.56. If it moves up to 105.66, you move 10 pips because that's 10, right? Second number after the decimal for Japanese yen pairs. It's a little more straightforward, okay? Um, and you guys can see that. Uh, so your USD example right here. Let's move here. So for example, let's get a little, this guy, okay? You can see right here, um, let's say at the right side of my screen, you can see nine, skip the number decimal number and you can see 926. So let's go up to 936. You can see there 936 if you skip the number decimal number, 936. So we started at 926, you can see the, the first blue box, 926. We went up to 936. What is that? 10 pips. But you can always measure it with this little measuring tool. 10, right? 10 pips. Okay. So, okay. Let's get into lots and position sizing. Okay. In Forex, um, positions are measured in lots. Now, one lot refers to $100,000 worth of a currency. Okay. So if I if I open, if I go long on the Euro USD and I open one lot, um, that means I opened hundred thousand dollars worth. Okay, I typically trade in at my current account size in ten lots. It's a million dollar size. Okay, depending on on the stop loss. Okay, so yes, when you trade one lot, each pip is worth ten dollars on most of the major pairs. Okay, um, you can trade any size you want, depending on your broker. Make sure you understand this when you go to enter your position sizes. Um, some brokers will ask you how many lots you want to open. So if you put one, it's gonna be 100,000. But some brokers ask you, what is the notional value of the position you want to open? So you'd have to type out 100,000 to trade one lot. Okay, so yes, when you trade one lot, each pip movement, we just talked about pip movements, is $10. Okay, so if you're gonna only trade a ten thousand dollar size or a tenth of a lot then each pip would be one dollar okay so if i opened uh, 926 my euro usd position here and i got and i exited at 936 uh with one lot if i went long with one lot um i made a hundred dollars because ten pips ten dollars per pip okay so let's go to real trading example 
from this week, okay? I think you guys that are in the Discord know this. Um, we took the, um, the AUUSD trade right here. You can see it on a 618, okay? So we took that head and shoulders, okay? And let's say we entered around here, okay? And let's, um, let's open up MT5 there, okay? My stop loss would be below here. I'm targeting, I don't really set a TP. I can make another video on that later. I exited around here. You can see it's about 60, 60 pips, okay, 60 pips. I was risking 30, I was going for 60. So two to one risk reward, that's all nice. I, I entered like off this hammer candle right here. You guys can see this hammer candle on the 618. Uh, yeah, you can see down here at about, you remember skip number, decimal number. I entered around 891. Um, so, a 90. So around there. So I had about 35 pips. I keep this open ended. Um, I, I usually trail stops. Anyways, this was my entry. And so, let's go to history right here. You can see this week, these are my four trades on the Aussie position. I entered at 891, there you go. And I exited at, well, I'm blind. 954, so about 60 pips, right? From 890 to 950, about 60, 65 pips. And see, $10 per pip, um, but I trade 10 lots. You can see the number 10 here. I told you I trade 10 lots, so that's $1 million size. And so, uh, for me, it's $100 per pip, so about 60 pips, I made about 6K, okay? You can see that right there, okay? And so, I exited at 54, and that makes sense, right? Because I trailed my stop, okay? I secured all this, okay? I think it was on the one hour, after this inverse hammer, I'm like, oh, okay, we're coming down. So what I did was I moved my stop, which was below the 618, to below this structure, below one ATR. Got stopped out at 54, and the rest is history. Secured 50, 60 pips. Okay, so I hope you guys understand how the sizing works. Okay, margin. All right, so again, 50 to one in the US, you can get more outside of the US, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so 50 to one, what does that mean? It means if you wanna trade one lot, which is 100,000, you only need $2,000 cash in your Forex account. So if you put in, if you have a forex account with two thousand dollars, you can trade one lot. You can trade a hundred thousand dollars size, and each pip will be worth ten dollars. But be careful, of course, as always, be safe. Um, never risk more than one percent of your total trading capital on one trade. That's my advice. That's the golden rule. Don't break it. So whatever, you can have ten k, trade one lot, whatever. It really doesn't matter. Margin and and leverage these things don't matter. What matters is how much are you risking and how much is that in dollar amounts, okay? So, let's say you have a 10,000, let's say you have a $10,000 Forex account, right? And you're gonna open one lot here where I did, okay? Let's say you're, you can see right here, let's say your stop loss is 20 pips, okay? And you open one lot with 10,000, 20 pips would be $200, okay? 10% of 10,000 is 1,000, that means 1% is 100, okay? So with this, you're risking 200, you're risking 2%. That's the maximum I ever advise, but I really advise you guys to get into the habit of never risking more than 1%. So you would either have to trade a half a lot, or you would need an entry where your stop loss is only 10 pips, so if you caught the bottom, that's okay. So you're only risking that $100. Or you can trade half a lot, so you input your size at 50,000, um, and then you can have your 20 pip stop, and in that, and now you're not risking more than one hundred dollars in a ten thousand dollar count. Okay, again, guys, I say this over and over. The best approach to making money in trading is to focus on consistency, focus on the good habits, and then after you have that consistency and that track record, get funded. Uh, go to prop firm funding program and get a funded account and trade other people's capital so you don't risk your own. Okay, um, that makes the most sense. Uh, there's really, it's just a no-brainer. Okay. So we went through all this. <clears throat> These are the basics of Forex trading, okay? You must create an account with a Forex broker to trade the Forex markets. We are primarily swing traders, meaning we hold on to medium term positions. I close all my positions on Fridays, I go flat. My positions last anywhere from one or two hours to 
four or five days. Okay, up, you know, close Friday, so the most it could ever be is five days. If I open Sunday evening, six days. Okay, so forex market hours. Let's get into this again. Okay, so this is this is if you live in EST. Okay, London session. It's gonna be three in the morning for people on the East Coast. New York session starts at 8 a.m. Sydney at 5 p.m. Okay, in Tokyo at 7 p.m. The Asia session. Um, okay, in in each rel in each country, the forex session starts at 8 a.m. So that's why it's maybe a little confusing. Some people U.S. market open, stock markets open at 9:30, but forex markets actually open at 8 a.m. You can see New York here, 8 a.m. Okay. So, and you can see London 3, it's five hour difference. That's 8 a.m. in London. Forex sessions open at 8 a.m., okay? So, you know, if you're, if you're um, not much to know here, I'm a swing trader, so I don't care too much about sessions. I hold positions based on TA, um, not based off fundamentals or sessions. I hold them over a few days. If you're a scalper and you're trading the GBP, the British pound or the Euro, maybe you're gonna have more volume or activity during the London session. If you wanna trade USD, you know, New York, if you, maybe if you're trading some Aussie pairs or some Japanese yen pairs, you have more volume or activity in the Asia session. Not necessarily true. The most volume is usually New York, London, when these two are um, together. So from 8 a.m. to lunchtime New York, when these two are, are going on at the same time, that's usually the best, the, the biggest moves and the most activity in the Forex markets. It gets quiet at the start of Sydney because Sydney is the only thing open. When Tokyo opens, it picks up a little bit on weeknights okay and so and so on okay all right let's go through some fundamentals i said i'm a technical trader and it's true i only trade based off technical analysis and yes it's 100 percent to be profitable and successful only trading technicals don't listen to what anybody else tells you um, you don't need to trade fundamentals or even be aware of them i like to be aware of them um, just for fun um, i like to know what moves the forex markets now interest rates this is the major driver of currency values on a macroeconomic long-term scale each country's currency is managed by that country's central bank. Now, the central bank of the United States is the Federal Reserve, okay? The job of a central bank is price stability and employment, but central banks control the money supply or the amount of money in circulation. They have different tools at their disposal, but the one that all traders and market participants keep an eye on is the interest rate. When, cent when central banks are making interest rate decisions, traders pay particular attention. The general rule of thumb is that rising interest rates are good for a currency while lowering interest rates are negative for a currency. For example, if the Federal Reserve continues to raise rates while the ECB or the European Central Bank is lowering rates, you can look for long-term shorting the Euro USD because the denominator is raising, it should be bullish for USD while the ECB is lowering rates, it should be bearish for Euro, okay? My recommendation is to stay out of the market when a central bank is making an interest rate announcement. Use the calendar. We've talked about this before. This is all you have. To, if you don't want to learn more about fundamentals, you don't have to because you can trade purely off technicals. But just be aware. Come to forexfactory.com. This calendar, whenever there's a red folder, be careful. Tighten your stop or maybe don't take a position at that time because it will be volatile. Like there'll be maybe a decent sized move. So red folders, everything else you don't have to care about. You don't have to care about yellow or orange folders. If there's a red USD, you know, GDP is coming out or CPI or NFP the first Friday of every month, be careful. And that's next month, next week, right? Um, this week. Um, we have NFP, non-farm payrolls, first Friday of every month. Um, so if you have any USD positions open, secure some profits before 8.30 a.m. Friday, every first Friday, because there's a red USD folder, okay? So, um, just be aware of that, just extra volatility, okay? Um, but most of the time you're okay, there's not too many of these uh, and, and it's not gonna affect your trading too much at all. You can see some central bank rates here, what we just talked about, Jap for example, the, Jap the Bank of Japan has kept interest rates particularly low this year in 2022. They haven't been raising rates to combat inflation like other central banks, especially the Fed, has been, okay? And so because of this discrepancy, that's a perfect real life example of, of, of what we talked about here, okay? And because of this discrepancy, the, you know, the Japanese yen short has been the trade of the year. Let's come over here and put on a weekly time frame, and you can see this looks like a crypto chart, right? November 2020. So look at the past two years. This thing's up from 100 to 140. 40% in forex is insane. 
insane. It's not a like crypto, right? Because no one's 100 um, but you're using your margin. You're making big moves because you, you have nice leverage. But you know, these are the typical moves in a day in Forex, you know, half a percent. So 40% is just a mega, mega, mega bullish trend. Okay, 40,000 pips, I believe. Anyways, that's because USD has been, the Federal Reserve has been raising rates. Japanese, you know, Japan, they've been focused on keeping rates low. Again, the only thing you need to know is don't trade during interest rate announcements, which you'll, you'll find through these red folders. And the rule of thumb is a country raising rates is good for that currency, it's bullish. And a country lowering rates is bad for that currency. We all know the Fed has been raising rates to fight inflation. That's been good for the USD. We can put the Dixie here, which is the dollar index. And, and similarly, we can see how bullish it's been. Okay, we can see how bullish it's been from June 21, so the past year here. Okay, and that's what's killed the crypto bull market, unfortunately, because there is an inverse correlation between a currency and interest rates and risk on risk off, right? Um, one, you know, and this could lead to a recession if they continue raising rates, but we won't get into that. To combat inflation, a uh, country raises rates, that's bullish for the dollar. When you're raising rates, money flows into the dollar because, hey, the interest rate is raising. I can get a better percentage on my cash. I can hold bonds and get a safe investment, better percentage. So money flows out of speculative risk assets like stocks and crypto, which is riskier, and into um, safer investments like cash and bonds because the rates are being raised. And that's why you see um, kind of bear markets happen when rates are being raised, typically, okay? Um, and of course, they've been lowering rates to near zero for the past decade. And you can see it's been going down since like 2000. Well, this is 85 since 2002 uh, after the dot com bubble and, and so on. Right. And it's been very bullish. We've been like a decade long bull market. OK. Um, OK, so let's continue on here. Inflation, one of the principal things the central banks watch when making interest rate decisions is inflation. Okay, so we talked about this. You guys can pause the screen and read some of these things. CPI, stay away from the red folders, uh, the CPI, PPI, okay, economic strength. Okay, and yeah, in summary, central banks control the stability and overall supply of their respective currencies, and all market participants are watching this news. Here are the major central banks of the major currencies of the world, okay? the RBA, and so on. Advanced intermarket analysis, okay? Um, we're gonna skim through these. Again, correlations are nice. It's better to just focus on your chart and what's happening on your chart, okay? And trade the TA. Um, they're nice to know, but they, they always break. So, you know, things change, things change over time. You know, if there's an inverse correlation between the dollar and gold. You can't just, every time gold's going up, who's leading, who's lagging? And sometimes they go up together, sometimes they go down together, because every environment is different. But the main thing to establish is that if bond yields are go up, the local currency goes up. We already talked about this. The relationship with equities is a negative correlation. Fall in bond prices, which when interest rates rise on bonds, bond prices fall. That's a whole other story. Is negative for stocks and rising bond prices is good for stocks. Commodity prices. A falling US dollar is positive for commodity prices. Okay. Conversely, a rise in US dollar is negative for commodity prices. They go in the opposite direction of bond prices, same as interest rates. That's because everything's priced in dollars. Like crypto, commodities are priced in dollars. It's, it's oil, dollars, it's gold, USD for the most part. But again, we saw this happen this year because of rampant inflation. It's different from environments of the past. We actually saw commodities go up like crazy while the dollar started going up. So don't pay too much attention to correlations. There's the gold. Um, something you can know about some currencies. There's some correlations. Canada, Australia, New Zealand are some of the top gold producers in the world. Okay, and Switzerland backs 25% of its reserves with gold. So if gold goes up, AUD, USD, and New Zealand USD goes up. If gold goes up, USD CAD and USD Chef go down. You can you can look for those correlations. Sometimes there's interesting trades there. I wouldn't focus on this. I'll just be aware of it. Okay, um, you know they have st strong relationships with gold. Okay, so all right, oil. Crude, okay, liquid gold, a lot of implications, OPEC, okay. One thing to know about crude is every Wednesday, there's a little yellow folder here, and it's crude oil inventories. It's yellow, because this is a Forex website, it won't affect the USD that much, but if you're trading crude, um, you know, it's more like orange or red. It's not, it's not too crazy, but you'll, you'll notice some 10.30 every Wednesday, there's crude oil inventories come out, so something to keep in mind if you trade crude, and um, you know, you might have a little move, nothing crazy though, um, okay. so. 
Um, USD CAD has a very nice correlation with crude because Canada is a top five oil producer in the world. And if oil goes up, USD CAD goes down and vice versa. Sentiment, we talked about interest rates, um, the fear gauge, the VIX. I'm not going to get too much into that. You guys have heard me and probably other YouTubers talk about sentiment. Okay, basically, there's two terms used to describe investor sentiment. Risk on is when we're in a bull market and everyone's feeling speculative. They want to use extra money to take risks, to invest in the stock markets, to invest in crypto. And when we're in a risk on environment, usually interest rates are being lowered. When, when the central bank lowers interest rates, the dollar goes down, of course, but also you're lowering the cost of capital. That means people can borrow more, right? They can buy more houses because mortgage rates are lower, interest rates are lower, interest rate for loans are lower, so they borrow more, they invest more, they start new businesses. So that's why it all has to do with interest rates, but it's called a risk on environment. Some traits of this are positive investor sentiment, stocks and crypto rallying, USD down, commodities up, um, environment signs include expanding corporate earnings, optimistic economic outlooks, increasing stock markets. If stocks are outperforming bonds, that's another one, okay? because stocks are riskier. You can, you, and there's kind of betas uh, for this. NASDAQ is riskier than the Dow Jones. If NASDAQ's outperforming, um, uh, or if altcoins are outperforming Bitcoin or Ethereum, and meme coins are rallying, it's even more, right? If the VIX or the volatility index is down, we are risk on. Cold silver ratio down is risk on. And New Zealand JPY and AUD JPY up is risk on. We always talk about the Aussie. The Aussie has a very positive correlation with risk. When the Aussie or the Kiwi is rallying, especially um, in relation to JPY or USD, then we're in risk on. Okay, that's because of the carry trade typically. Okay, um, which is just interest rate differentials between the countries. And then some traits of risk off. Fear for investor sentiment. People sell risky positions and they go into bonds. Okay, investors seek cash, gold, treasury bonds. Um, USD up, stocks down, commodities down. Okay, investors seek cash, gold, treasury bonds, and safe haven currencies, which are USD mainly. Um, yen and USD are up, and Swiss franc is another safe haven currency. I would say mainly USD. And we see this. It's kind of funny because you saw how the Dixie rallied. You know, inflation is supposed to be the devaluation of a currency, but if the combat, if the thing that you do to combat inflation is to raise interest rates and it's positive for the USD, I've been telling the Discord this, I don't agree with everything you read in the books. I mean, look at this. I mean, for me, a hedge against inflation is cash. Maybe you don't want to hold cash in a bank. Uh, I'm being tongue in cheek. You don't want to hold cash in a bank because it's getting inflated away, but dollars going up, you want a long dollars. So it's not cash, but it's USD. What's the best hedge against inflation? Look how bullish you are. It's been a bull market for USD because they're going to raise rates to fight the inflation and the raising rates raises USD. So a bunch of long dollar trades is a, is, is a hedge against inflation, more so than Bitcoin, if you ask me, from a trader standpoint. Environment signs can include corporate earnings, downgrades, uncertain central bank policies, falling stock markets. If the VIX is up, we are risk off. That's the volatility index. Gold and silver ratio is up, we are risk off. And if the Aussie is down, we are risk off. Okay, so these are the risk parameters we just talked about. And you can see right here. The logic behind these moves has to do with what they call the carry trade. Basically, in a risk-on environment, low-yielding currencies with low yield, low interest rates, like the Japanese yen, are sold to fund the purchase of high-yielding currencies because people are risk-on. They're, they're celebratory. They're speculative. They're risky. They want higher-yielding stuff. The highest-yielding historically has been Aussie for their superior returns. So people are selling yen and buying Aussie. So that's why AED, JPY, if it's bullish, that means we're risk-on. Maybe Bitcoin will be bullish. Stocks, if it's bearish, if you see a head and shoulders, maybe we're about to go risk-off. Okay, Investor sentiment is positive and riskier during risk-on. For this reason, these pairs specifically are seen as risk parameters. When investors begin to sell the high yielding currencies to run back to the safe havens, like these begin to drop, we are probably approaching risk off. Pictured above is the S&P and AUD JPY in the bottom, and look at that correlation. This is the S&P. So on the top is the stock market, and on the bottom is the Forex pair of AUD JPY, Australian dollar, Japanese yen. They're similar, they're the same thing, right? Risk on risk on stocks are going up crypto is going up you can see the correlation okay um it's helpful to keep all this information in the back of your mind as you gain more experience my focus would be on the charts and on the risk management but it's useful to know these things so you know what's going on in forex we're not going to talk about ta that's what my channel is all about 
Um, this was just an introduction of Forex for beginners. Actually, all right guys, I think that brings us to a close. So I hope this video has earned your thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed getting an introduction into the world of Forex. I don't recommend brokers, but you can look up what are the best brokers um, and you'll find names like Forex.com, IGON. I'm not gonna recommend any. Those are the popular ones that are regulated and safe to trade with in the US. There's many other ones as well um, and outside the US. Um, you can open your account. Um, stay tuned for my video coming up soon on 10 reasons why Forex trading is better than crypto trading. And I hope this video on your thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found value. Leave a comment down below with any questions so that I can help answer those for you guys. And again, if you're starting Forex, I recommend keeping your watch list small and focus on the process, guys. Never risk more than 1% per trade. Focus on two or three trades a week. Every Sunday when the markets are closed, you should make your plan for the week. Okay, if, any, if anything approaches your plan and does exactly what you wanted it to do, enter that trade, don't risk more than 1%, trail your profits and secure those profits before Friday. Focus on this over and over and over again for six months, for a year. Once you have a process and you're doing this consistently, then hey, you can get funded and trade a company's money. You can trade 100K, 500K, and guess what? All you need is five, 10% a month. Nothing crazy. Um, it, I mean, you, I don't have to tell you guys. I know if you're watching this video, I don't say this in a bad way, but there's a good chance a lot of you are losing money or not profitable, so I don't need to tell you or convince you. So hopefully that's enough to convince you to try to do this the right way, okay? And then you can trade. You don't focus on 100x or a 10, a 100x margin or, or multiplying your account from, from 10K to a billion. It's not going to happen. But if you focus on a process, then you can get a funded account, and then all you need is 10% a month, right? 5% a month. You have a $500,000 account and you make 1% a month. You're making 5K a month. Most of you can live, most everyone can live on 5K, right? A month. So it's very sustainable. Your path is there. Your life can change very fast. Have the perseverance. Don't give up. Um, and, um, you know, that's my, that's my piece of advice for today. All right, guys, I'll see you next week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to check out our Discord, there's a link down below. Forex Bible, ebook, and our beginner's course. It's not found on Udemy or Amazon anymore. It's only for the Discord. That's for free. All right, guys, so much love, and I'll catch you guys next week.